it transitioned into the good doctor and talk about Labor Day weekend. And also, doctor, by the way, it's Kentucky Derby weekend here in Kentucky. How are you, Doc? Good. Hello, Kentucky. Glad to be here. I, oh, listen, how do I pronounce your last name? Is It's Leo Liss. Is that right? Leah, yeah, Lease, like the Lisa car. Oh, Lease. Oh, Lease, okay. Lisa, Lease. All right, Dr. Lease. We're in, we're in weird times right now. I can't imagine being single and trying to date in times like this, uh, let alone just going to a party can be challenging. You always have COVID-19 in the back of your head. Uh, this is Labor Day weekend where people are going to be having Labor Day parties and, I guess, cookouts. Uh But also, here in Kentucky, the Kentucky Derby is tomorrow. How should people conduct themselves? How do you, yeah, man, juleps. How do you love and how do you have fun in a time of COVID and keep your sanity? Well, I think that, you know, I think that you have to think about the people that you interact with. The least amount of people that you interact with, the better. But if you keep interacting with the same people, the same group of friends or the same, you know, COVID pod, your risk goes way down. And studies really show you can, like, twin with other families or twin, you know, with a small group of friends without increasing your risk as long as everybody is taking some reasonable precautions. So that's something to think about. And you guys got some nice weather, so staying outside is always a great way to stay healthy. So those are some tips. Uh, so what advice do you have for, and again, this interview is for like uh, dealing with uh, relationships uh, during during COVID with your wife. Again, uh, some I read somewhere where they said that I thought they thought that divorces were way up during COVID. Why 34%. do you think that is? Yeah, why do you yeah, think you, that they're is? Either, they're making or breaking relationships. So divorce rates up by a third, and, and uh, there's going to be a lot of new babies born in January. So yeah, either making or breaking <laughs> the relationship. So it's, it's just more intense time and there's less child care. So a lot more stress. And then, of course, homeschooling, no camp. Everybody's trying to be super mom, super dad. And, you know, my best advice to pandemic-proof your relationship is to realize that we can't get all we need from our partners. Uh, society tells us that women need men. When reality, actually, men benefit way more from marriage than women. And women who are single are uh, happier and healthier. So, but women... Uh, benefit way more from close friendships and often those close friendships predict happier and healthier lives so i really suggest that you know you really reach you know really find what you need and if you can't get it from your partner and your partner doesn't have the same interest or you know it's just it's just they 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 can't you know speak to some emotionally and you can really try to get it from your friends so that's one piece of advice the second is like don't forget to go on a date even if the date is in your own home surprise your partner with a new recipe get nostalgic look at those old wedding albums like you know time to you know lock the door and put on some costumes like make it fun and you can alternate i'll be the you know i'll take you on a date one night and then your partner can take you know can surprise you the other way around and try to do that once a week don't forget to reconnect intimately that's so important are there any positives coming out of this i know early on we saw people that we've never seen in our neighborhood all walking together teenagers and parents actually talking are we communicating more at least during this yeah, I think this is an incredible time instead of looking outward to look inward to get our needs met, like within our immediate family. You know, game nights are coming back. You know, people are, are, are watching, you know, the whole Star Wars series all nine and bonding over that or watching the old movies when they were a kid. And, you know, uh, I think there's a tremendous opportunity to make some positive out of the negative. And when we look back on this in 10 years, you know, if you don't get very sick, of course, you're going to look back on it with a sense of, I survived this and I'm stronger for it. Talk with uh, Dr. Lee, and we're talking about love in a time of COVID-19. And I just got to ask you, one of the things that came out of this positive is people have decided, oh, wait, you're supposed to wash your hands? Yeah, you wash your hands. But people are washing their hands, and on top of that, there's all kinds of hand sanitizer going on. When we get through the COVID-19 uh, deal, do you think that we're going to be a nation that's just really, really heavy with OCD patients? Because it seems to me like this could be an obsessive compulsive behavior that we're going through with the hand sanitizer. I- it's really funny because, you know, when I treat OCD patients, which I treat all day long, you know, I used to say, how many times do you wash your hands a day? And I always consider more than 10 as being excessive. And now that's kind of way normal. 
And, you know, I used to make them do things like touch toilet seats to get, like, germs on their hands and not let them wash our hands to learn, like, you know, nothing's going to happen, bad's going to happen to them. That's called exposure therapy. But I feel like now it's a lost cause, and I just, I, I don't have much to say about it. And I think, yes, we are going to have a lot more uh, worries about germs because germs are, you know, this is such a serious risk. Um, but I also think the upside is we'll have a lot more, less colds and illness because people will be, uh, you know, a little more careful and not. Uh, in, in how they, you know, wash their hands and communicate with people, which overall will be will be good for society. So those are some ups and downsides of this whole thing. You know, there's been a lot of transition over the last couple of decades. Women, obviously, are now in the workforce, and and for the most part, women are making more than men at this point or in, cer in certain areas. Um, but things have not changed in some way when it comes to domestic bliss. Like, and I have come to accept this, and I'm fine with this. I'm totally fine, but it really doesn't line up with uh, what the new relationship should be for men and women, but the term happy wife, happy life is something that us men have come to know as, look, I'm never right. I accepted it a couple of years into marriage, and I accept that I'm never going to be right, and uh, whatever she says goes, and is kind of uh, is the rule in the house. And look, it works in our house, but in reality, it's not exactly fair. Yeah, I think what you're talking about is, that when frustration results from unmet expectations, the best thing you can do is change your expectations. So a lot of men have learned, you know, I can't expect my wife to give me praise for things I do. I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm just going to try to make her happy so I can avoid the argument. That's like reducing your expectation. Great way to cope, right? Um, but there's also the flip side, which is that, you know, you need to give a lot more praise to your partner. If, you know, if, you're, if your husband walks in and picks up a dish, you know, immediately say, thank you so much for helping me. You know, don't look for all their deficiencies. Immediately praise the things that you like. At first, they might think you're really corny. Like, I tell this to families all the time. You know, try five praises in 10 minutes. Feel what that's like. At first, they'll probably think you're putting it on. But if you keep doing it, you'll see them smile and beam, you know? Hey, baby, you look really good today. I love that. You know, oh, I love that you work out. Like, I'm glad you're trying to stay fit for me. Like, oh, I saw you do the dishes. You're a real Mr. Mom. Like, you know, give your man some praise. It's not going to hurt. It's only going to help. Stop with the criticism. You're going to get more of what you want from doing this. And you'll be much happier if you, you know, switch to that paradigm. So, you know, I, I, I agree with your strategy. I think it's great. I will tell your wife more praise and you know focus on the positive <laughs> well we have, we have I'm a, taking that portion and replaying it yeah. a little bit later, yeah, record it and play it for later. <laughs> just just for full disclosure the saying at my house is uh happy dwight happy life of so it, it works out fine of course she, is, is. <laughs> she is psychiatrist dr lease dr lease thank you so much for the time and have a safe labor day weekend thank you very much you too Take care. Hey.